Hi there, I'm Ranjan Bhattacharya, your host for the Baker Street Property Meet, and we're here just preparing for uh, 320 people to come for our Baker Street Meet tonight. And I'm just joined by Jim Halliburton. Uh, how are you doing, Jim? I'm excellent. Thanks very much for inviting me along tonight. It's always a pleasure. I'm just amazed how you've grown so fast and so quickly. But I told you right at the beginning, Ranjan, you are the man, this will work, and you'll get the, probably the biggest property meet going in the country very soon. Phenomenal, really a I mean, major achievement. It, it's, it's come a long way from our first meet, which uh, you were on the panel for. I was, uh, yes. We had 70 people in the room and yeah. over 300 now. Um, but uh, many, many people watching this will know that um, uh, you're, you're known as the HMO Daddy. Uh, Correct. You do a lot of uh, houses in multiple occupations. Mm, um, I do. But I understand um, you've moved on a little bit now from doing um, converting houses into um, uh, HMOs. You're doing commercial property. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Of course, yeah. Uh, I still like my little houses, don't mm. get me wrong, uh, but the economics work so much better when you get a large unit. So once you get over uh, six in a house, the profitability escalates. Mm -hmm. So if you had an 18-bed HMO, that is far more profitable than having three six-bed HMOs. Also, when you go for the commercial buildings, they work out so much more cheaper per unit. So if you're taking a property, uh, you could probably buy a 20-bed HMO commercial building for not much more than you'd pay for a six-bed house. Mm -hmm. So your unit cost comes right down. Uh, so it's easier. With the legislation change as well, where you can turn uh, offices and, uh, what else is it, shops and uh, uh, commercial, uh, other commercial buildings into residential without having to go through the planning. Because as soon as you ever mention to the planners that you are planning to use an HMO, you, you're blackboard, uh, mm -hmm. blackboard. So you can get, turn it into residential and then you can use the permitted development rules which allow you to take a residential property and convert it into six yes. uh, without any planning. So you go from an office to uh, a flat and then turn the flats into a, a six bed HMO. Makes it so much cheaper per unit to buy the property. Uh, you are into a, a different world, it's commercial. You're talking about larger units but the profitability uh, increases. So though I like my little houses and I enjoy it, uh, and also you, you feel you're doing a lot more because there's so much in my area. I'm north of Birmingham, uh, south of Wolverhampton. There's so a lot of commercial buildings standing there empty. And that sort of upsets me. I feel that things should be productively used. Uh, so you're not taking uh, this great fear that you're taking properties away from um, the first time buyers mm -hmm. and that type of thing. So you're not competing. You're just taking derelict buildings and putting them into use, which gives me, I know it sounds sad, <laughs> but it gives me a great deal of satisfaction to take something that is empty, it's not been used, and put it into productive use that's been empty probably for 10 years. Yes. And on top of that, your buyers are very grateful. Uh, sorry, the buyers, the sellers are very grateful. Because mm -hmm. they've been sitting there with this property empty. Uh, they're paying business rates on it because mm -hmm. there's no exemption for business rates now. They're having to insure it, and it costs a lot more to insure. And they spend sleepless nights worrying, because in my area, I'm sure in your area you have the same thing, there's people around there who like to recycle stuff. So they like to go into these buildings, take all the metal out, and uh, reuse it. So before you know it, you've got buildings stripped of everything. Mm -hmm. So you can usually do quite a good deal, a flexible deal, so you don't even have to have money to buy these properties, you just go to the owner and say, I'll take this building off you, I will uh, look after it, I'll insure it, and once I've got the building up and going, I'll be able to buy it off you, and then give you what you want for the building. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it makes things so much easier. You can literally pick up a building for nothing, uh, as long as you're prepared to insure it, and you can get the confidence of the owner that you're going to be able to uh, turn it into uh, use, and you'll be able to pay him at the end. They'll obviously remain the owner of the building. You do the risk of converting it. Uh, but as I say, it's, life is so much easier since uh, the permitted development by using prior notification has come in. So there are lots of um, uh, differences, of, obviously, in different parts of the country. And I think you've characterised um, some of the market dynamics of buying commercial buildings and finding them in, in, outside of the London and the South East. Mm. 
Um, but the tenant types are different as well, ah, is it? Ah, yes. There's the big challenge. See, mm -hmm. you're so lucky in London, uh, in some ways, is uh, if you advertise a property, you'll have 20 people and they're all working and they're all can be credit checked. In my part of the world, uh, half the buildings are empty and for sale mm. and the others, if you ask nicely, you can get hold of them but you're dealing with a much more challenging tenant. So you've got to be more hands-on in your management. You've got to be much more selective in who you take and prepared to take empty units. Otherwise, you get one bad tenant move into a large building, they, you'll end up with all your other tenants gone and this one tenant there who's not paying the rent. So you, it, it is a different world. You've got to be, in my part of the world, you've got to be a landlord. Yes. Uh, while you can be a much more almost hands-off uh, investor who, uh, once the tenants moved in, they pay their deposit, they pay everything else, uh, they set themselves up on using mm -hmm. direct debit or standing order. It costs you virtually uh, nothing um, in voids and bad debts. Well, the reverse is in my part of the world. It's gonna change, hopefully, uh, so, but that is the big difference. Uh, your, your, your tenant type is so much m more challenging, uh, but they're interesting. It gives you a flavor of life. So uh, we're just a week away from the monumental Brexit decision. Um, so um, what's your view in terms of, not political stuff, but uh, in how it's going to affect, the uncertainty is going to affect the kind of things that you're doing at the moment and going to be doing for the rest of the year? This is the problem with property. There's no certainty in it. You're always, uh, it's almost like an act of faith. Uh, not, you're not sure it's going to work out. Wherever stage you've been in the business, it's only in retrospect yes. you knew, knew you made the right decision. And when you made that decision, you are the cleverest person on the block. Uh, so I've, at the from time, it's scary as hell. <laughs> at, at the time, you're absolutely right. You are scared. Is it right? People laugh at you. You're stupid. And it's only 10 years down the line or uh, whatever that you realize you made a good decision. But my experience has always been uh, the only mistake you can make is not to buy property. That's the mistake you have. And property's always been kind to me. Long term, it's worked out fine. Yes. So whatever Brexit has, it gives you an opportunity with the uncertainty to be able to get deals uh, uh, where other people are fearful to tread. So this is the time, a great golden opportunity to get into property. I always find that whereas property traders, uh, they're looking for a buyer. Mm. And it's often harder to find a buyer in uncertain times than it is a tenant. So as long as whatever you're building, you, you know you can find a tenant and you're going to make cash flow, then uh, that is going to see you through any uncertainty. Absolutely right. It, I have found it so much easier to uh, rent properties, remortgage them and get your, your money out by using the commercial finance mm -hmm. approach than uh, flip properties. It just doesn't work for me. And also, I don't know why people want to sell a property because you're giving away the crown jewels. You make 20, 30, 50 grand uh, profit when you could keep that property and it makes you 50 grand a year for the rest of your life, plus also the capital appreciation. So uh, maybe it's not so much at my age, I should be looking to flip, but certainly if you're uh, slightly younger than me, you want to keep your properties. Like you, young yes. man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Flattery will get you yes. everywhere. On that note, um, I think we'll, we'll sign off. Jim will, of course, be joining us at a future Baker Street Property Meet when he'll be coming down to speak to us and share his wisdom on HMOs. Um, do check out the other In Conversation with videos on this page. And also, come down and see us at a live Baker Street Property Meet event. You can find out about the next one at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com. Thanks very much, Jim, and Pleasure. bye for now.